Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Pro and HD video blog for the 16th of June, 2017. A couple of areas to watch now in the tropics. This area in the Gulf of Mexico, still sort of up in the air as to exactly what's going to happen. I am more interested in this feature, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Both of these have a medium chance of development over the next five days. This one's up to 60%. So this is getting there, but it looks pretty complex overall, and I'll talk about that more in a moment. This feature is a tropical wave out in the deep tropics. I mean, look, there's five degrees north latitude, and this system is just to the north of there. So that's, that's pretty far to the south, and it should move off just north of due west. And so interests here along the north coast of South America, Trinidad, Tobago, the southern windward islands, this tropical wave could easily come your way and at least bring an enhancement of showers and thunderstorms over the next few days. Looking at the visible satellite imagery here, uh, you see this is our disturbed area in the northwest Caribbean, more than likely going to move into the southern gulf, and then either try to develop and head up this way, maybe towards the northeast gulf with some kind of weak development or maybe eventually towards the western gulf including south texas northeast mexico uh, this is one of those to be determined type situations uh, a little bit hard to pin down what's going to happen because it's complex uh, whereas this is a little bit more straightforward first of all you can see very easily the rotation of this system the upper level winds fanning out away from it so we don't have strong winds cutting across the top of it in this direction instead it's sort of this clockwise outflow. It is sitting over water temperatures that are warm enough, and this could develop a little bit further over time. Now, as you can see, in the June 1st, June 11th through the 20th time period of past developments dating back to 1851, it's a long time, we don't have anything that has developed out this way. Nothing. And this may not become a storm or a depression out this way but it's more than likely going to keep trying to develop maybe it becomes a weak tropical storm we'll see it's fairly small in size but as you can tell and this is the main point here that this region uh, it's unprecedented for something to try to get going uh, this far east this early in the season as you can plainly see most of the development is either in the western basin or the southeast pacific uh, so maybe this will sort of break the precedent there. And if we look at a wider shot, this really tells the picture, the story better. Here's our tropical wave. And by the way, this is designated now as Invest Area 92L. That is the Hurricane Center's way of sort of beginning the process. Instead of just a tropical wave or a blob of clouds, they give it that number, 90 through 99. They use them again every season over and over it's just the first step where they can assign more resources and it gets sort of this name if you will 92 L and the L is for Atlantic and uh, that's what that's all about so there's 92 L here's another feature coming off and then more pulses of energy lining up over Africa as a favorable pattern is setting up across the region even here in June also want to just point out that water temperatures where the system is located definitely running above the long-term average this is the scale down here uh, and so it's no surprise that this is happening even though it's unusual um, because of the setup I don't think anybody should be too shocked that this is occurring it's just unusual to see the Saharan air layer pretty prevalent to the north of 92L here and this is simply an area of drier more stable warmer air in the mid levels that comes off of Africa with this easterly jet that comes out here and uh, ejects all of this very sometimes particulate laden air and as you can see on the scale the left side is less dry air the right side is certainly more especially into these pinks um, but we're, we're still here on the we'll call it the left third or the lower third of the scale uh, but that's farther to the north up here, as you can see through here, where the tropical wave is, 92L, fairly good moisture. So, And as you get farther to the west, you can clearly see there's less and less Saharan air influence. So this might go on to try to develop. 
Upper level winds right now in the Caribbean Sea are westerly, trying to get more of an arc to them, maybe developing more of a high pressure aloft where the winds come out you know, evenly instead of blowing across the system. But right now, upper level winds are still blowing across the developing system in the Caribbean. Uh, whereas out here, you can clearly see these winds are blowing away from like an exhaust system uh, 92L. So that would be, again, favorable. And we don't see strong winds cutting across this area for this to run into and get sheared apart. So we're going to definitely watch it. So let's see what it looks like in the GFS model. This is this morning's run, the 12Z run. And let me point out what's what. This is the east coast of the U.S. over here. All right. And there's Florida, etc. This would be the west coast of Africa. And here's the northern coast of South America. And that right there is the reflectivity in the model field, the 850 millibar field, or about 5,000 feet up, of the vorticity signature. And um, so you, you see this with the greens and the yellows, and then eventually it gets into the oranges and on up towards red. And this simply means more vorticity, faster spin in the atmosphere. And that equates to usually more energy being released by the storm. And in this case, we're looking to see if this becomes a tropical storm. Notice there's really not much in the way of energy bundling over here in the Western Caribbean. And I should point out, by the way, that this is valid tomorrow, Saturday morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. So this is 24 hours from today. And again, the main thing I want you to keep your eye on is this little feature right here. All right. This mouse of mine, it's, it's harder than ever to draw straight you know I can't draw perfect circles and it's hard to draw straight lines <laughs> gotta get a new mouse but you get the idea let me paint over it in yellow that might be easier so watch this area and then watch this area over here as I go through the frames alright so here's 48 hours out in time it's moving fairly fast 72 hours out in time and there's the system right there approaching the southern windward islands small definitely not taking up a lot of room and then you see an area of vorticity trying to take shape in the Gulf. Both of these fairly weak in the model field. In fact, if you look at this storm system up here over Canada, uh, this is just a surface low, a mid-latitude storm. This has a lot more energy with it or vorticity signature than 92L and then whatever this tries to become just to compare that. Also note, big area of high pressure here off the east coast. And this is to the south of that, so this is just going to continue to be driven off to the west and west-northwest with time. 96 hours out, it crosses through the southern Windward Islands, and then whatever this system tries to become, uh, weak as it may be, probably a good rainmaker, unfortunately. Uh, some areas don't need the rain, but maybe parts of the panhandle could use it. It's still hard to say exactly what's going to happen with this system. It doesn't look very well organized. And you can see this huge area of high pressure here. Uh, and then another area of high pressure to the west of the system. And it kind of comes up through that little alleyway there. Meanwhile, again, there's the system down in the southeast Caribbean. It could be a small 40 mile per hour tropical storm by then. You never know. Uh, something to keep an eye on by day five. Whatever's in the Gulf is pretty much out of the picture. And then our system is actually here, 92L fairly weak you know it's on the southwest side of this ridge moving through the eastern caribbean which is typically fairly hostile this time of year and i want to show you if we go back to the origin map see really no development even in this area the first um, the middle third of june so it's going to have a tough road ahead but that doesn't mean it won't develop further and it could certainly bring gusty winds Maybe some tropical storm conditions and squalls to portions of the southern windwards, north coast of South America. So keep an eye on it. And it's probably indicative of a fairly busy hurricane season ahead. The fact that we're seeing it this early in June definitely is a check mark in the pro column for it being a busy season. So take that as a sign and maybe do it a little extra, at least awareness, being up to date on the latest info. If not more preparedness, it might be a busy season. But you know, they say it only takes one over your house to ruin the season for you. And you just never know.
All right, well, that's it for me for today. I appreciate you tuning in. I'll be back throughout the weekend with updates. And, of course, you can follow along with many of these maps and charts within Hurricane Pro and HD, and I encourage you to do so. I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com and, of course, Hurricane Pro and HD. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.